when you came in the game at 17, it was no scatters, random shots. I mean, we're talking about Rough Riders Anthem out the box. That was like the first record, right? That people really loved as a mass. I did that in my, my bedroom in Atlanta. It wasn't no studio. I had the keyboard and an MP, and I plugged the keyboard directly into the MP and play what I was gonna play fast as hell because you only had like 16 seconds to catch it, then loop that and then add, add, add whatever I wanted to do to it. And the way that Rough Riders Anthem came up was because I was going to all the pet rallies and all these games where they was doing all these chants and stuff. It just felt festive. I'm like, yo, those chants are crazy. Damn, the energy feels crazy. So when I came back to New York with that sound, like nobody was really riding with it. DMX didn't like it at all. X thought it was like some rock and roll shit. He was like, well, you got me doing some rock and roll white boy shit. I was like, nah, I just, I, I just feel it's crazy and I feel like New York could use something different. Stop, drop, shut them down, open up shop. Stop, drop, Mark Pitts was the first person that could have bought it for this group called The Reaps with Tracy Lee was in and all that, right? So he had the beat and he wanted to pay me, I think at the time, 3,000. And I think I wanted 6,000. And then he was like, don't worry about it. I get another track or something. So thank God he did that. And a lot of people was telling me like, since I've been gone, like New York sound's been dead. If you from New York, stand up right now. If you from New York, stand up right now. Get up, get it up, get it, get it, get it up. And I was like having a hard time with that for like many years because I'm not the only New York producer. That's nice. There's a lot of people here that's great. Yeah, I'm on my New York shit. Back to the back on my New York shit. Yeah, I'm on my New York shit. Tim's with the shorts on my New York shit. But then when I zoomed into it, I started understanding what they was telling me because although there was other producers from New York, my music always left New York, but maintained New York. T.I. would like bring him out was a New York beat, right? Bring him out, bring him out. And they made him graduate and be able to go do all those different things. But that came from a New York sound. It's the difference between a beat maker and a producer. I'm not just calling you to just jump on something that I just found. Like, no, we producing it. This is the concept. I'm going to put you on this. I think you should violate this. Nah, do that over. Just take this, put this here, do that there. Say this line instead of that line. Say this and that. Is this artist prepared to do a party song tonight? Or should he just talk about a chick because... He all emotion. Like you gotta like it's different levels to it. If you gay so why you keep saying that you real fuck? Bet y'all look like chillies, lot of ribs. Oh when people hear young thug on my album, and they like, yo, I got a newfound respect for him. It's not that he hasn't always been nice. He probably hasn't been produced to this level. Like they don't even understand, like, the way that I'm ready to do it is just Come on, man, like, no disrespect, but like, we ain't here Wayne like that in a long time. Let's pray yeah. for the people that we just lost. God damn it, say. Yeah. Ra, ra, ra. Yeah. Woo. Oh. Oh. Pistol on my side, trick a finger on the job. Pistol on my side, trick a finger on the job. Pistol on a lot of these artists are not being produced. Side. What is my entry point back into hip hop? It's quality. That's it. It's quality. Don't go in the studio with people you're scared to scared of. Get yelled at. But that artist is gonna respect you for telling them that shit was whack. You just gonna sit there and just let him just fuck his own life up on your beat. A lot of people feel like I could talk like this because I've been successful um, for so long. I never did music for money. I never even knew I can get money in music. I was just doing music for the skating rink, for the radio stations, and for the parties, and for people to play it in their cars, for me to sit on 125th Street and hear something. I always program music with passion, 
with culture, with hip hop, with love, good times, craft. A lot of people know me as a businessman, but these motherfuckers forget that I'm an artist too. I just don't agree with a lot of the industry business. That's just like who wrote those rules? Like who created the penny rate? Who created, you know, reversions, like seven, eight year reversions after you done paid off your contract and everybody's made money, but people want to hold on and make money for these amount of years. And just all like the silly shit that came from the fifties. And once you're not caring about the hype and once you're not caring about money, you're going to start focusing on real things like, wait a minute. And, and so instead of like battling in the industry and becoming like this disgruntled producer and calling up my goons and really forcing a, a change to happen, I just felt like I just needed to step away and just change my life as a whole and create a diversified portfolio and things that remove me from being a slave and put me in a position to be an owner, right? And so now coming back into the music industry, I can have fun because I'm I'm an owner, I'm not, I don't feel like a slave. So Poison is uncut hip hop, curated, zone zone, right? Yeah, by the way, this is the original to the album cover. I had it for years. I just walked by and was like, this is the poison. You gotta face your poison in life in order to poison. Everything that's going on around us is poison. So a lot of us like turn our head from it, act like it's not happening instead of dealing with it. Like if you're a drug addict, the first sign of recovery is, is noting that you're a drug addict. That's the first sign of recovery. F facing your poison in order to poise on. I don't financially need this album, but spiritually I need this album, right? Because hip hop is in my blood and you know, I just didn't want to compromise nothing. And if, I'm, I'm 40 now, you know what I'm saying? So if I, if, if, I didn't, if I couldn't do a record that I wanted to do 100%, that means everything I did before was nothing. You know what I'm saying? I refuse to do that. Bring it back, bring it back. Now double your money and make a stack. I'm on to the next one. On to the next.